Welcome to Toffee TV and delighted to say I'm joined in the studio by Gavin Buckland. He's got another book and this one <laughs> has got Aidan Heath on the front so already it's won my heart with a league championship in yeah. his hand. The last time he ever won the league, the pity but hey ho, hey ho. Gav, come on, give us a bit of background, this book. Well yeah, it's, well this is obviously Oh, my favourite player as well, mm -hmm. Bart. So when yeah. I was given, like, you know, you get a suite of pictures for the front. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's on the front. That's the so, one. Yeah, yeah. So the background is, is this is the third book mm -hmm. of uh, a trilogy uh, of John Moses' time at Everton. He was the chairman of the yeah. club to Little Woods, the and being the owner of Little Woods, who have basically financially backed Everton in the 1960s, mostly, and did so thereafter. It's the th third book and final one of his time. Yep. at Everton mm. and the Littlewoods company's time at Everton and uh, it's called The End because it ends, like, this is the third one that goes from 85 to 94 and it finishes in 94 because it's the end because sadly John Moores dies yeah. in, in, in September 1903. It's nearly the end mm -hmm. because of the Wimbledon game and, and I also say it's the end because you only talk about the Premier League starting in 92. Mm. It didn't really start in 92. I think the first couple of seasons was just like an extension of the old Division 1. Yeah. I think that was the way it was viewed. I think it only really started to be seen as a separate sort of league as it is now. I think the 94-5 season when United beat Blackburn on the final day of the season. Uh, not Sorry, Blackburn, Blackburn beat United, beat United on the United, final yeah. day, uh, day of the season. Two games broadcast live and there was lots of, you know, it was a really... Uh, high profile season, lots mm. of media stuff, and I think that's probably viewed now as the first season of the Premier League. So it was, yeah. in essence, the final season of the old first yeah. division. So it was, it was quite and a few football reasons. before you know before football started for before, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, and 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 that's the thing. And because Moore sadly passed away in that that campaign, he'd done so much to shape the old first division. Mm. And the irony, and, and he got blocked in what they wanted to do with Everton in the 60s, you know, sign foreign players, or, you know, that type of stuff. He was blocked. But when the Premier League started, he would have loved it. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, they embraced yeah. the free market values that uh, Moore's uh, liked. And uh, that, that's the other irony. So he did what he, he, anything that he'd done to shape came to fruition with, with the Premier League and he'd sadly died just before it started and uh, Everton were obviously part of the formation of the Premier League as well but nearly nearly didn't get into it after the, the Wimbledon game. You know, so let's, end, end let's go back, what are the other three books called? Uh, Money Can't Buy Us Love which yeah. is Everton from 61 to 73, that's Harry Catterick really. Yeah. 73 to 85 is Boys from the Blue stuff, yeah, which, which I told you did. about. So yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. We and and, about and this is the end and the, the common thread with the three titles is they're all Reflect um, local culture mm, at yeah. the time, the end being the famous fanzine um, of, of Liverpool oh, in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, sadly, that didn't come from me, it came from uh, Simon Hart, a journalist who good lad, Simon. It. Yeah, he's yeah. great. Yeah, Very and uh, I'd, I'd love to lay claim to that. And, and it fits in nicely with the with the uh, the book, really. Yeah. It is the end in so many different ways. So we left the last book, um, Can't Buy His Love. So yeah. we obviously left it there. This one begins in eighty five, uh, yeah. which is obviously Everton's one of Everton's best best season yeah. ever, really, for what it did. Well, it's our best so season. It is the best really? season. Yeah, so, yeah. how did you pick it up from well, there? It is, I mean, you go straight from eighty five. I think it finished on Rotterdam, yeah. And um, I didn't touch on Heysel in mm. in that because you end up on a high. And that, the, 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 the the all three books they start they go from either bad to good or good to bad. Yeah. And this, you know, and so I thought. Finish at Rotterdam and then we, we, we carry on from you know being being a really good team. Mm. And I talk about high school, I'm obliged to yeah. and the impact on the club. I suggest it was huge, wasn't it? I am not so sure about that. Oh really? I, no, I, okay. I, I disagree. Okay. I think I think it's overplayed. Oh. I think it impacted on us, mm. but I don't really get this thing about and I talk about it. Um, oh, you know, the team broke up because of high school. Well, it really didn't, you know, because I mean, for nearly four years after we beat Man United five 0 all the ten players, all the the, the the eleven players who start the game were still at the club. That was four. And that was in eighty eight. Mm -hmm. All, all mm. so it didn't break up as such. And and teams break up naturally. They have a, a cycle about three or four years. Mm. And, and and we we you know that team in eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven. It was coming to the end of that three or four year cycle that mm. all teams have. You see, like Fergus and teams, Wenger's teams, mm. Liverpool in the seventies. If you look at teams that are four years apart under those managers, 
plays a difference. Yeah. And and I think the players in in, in the mid eighties had a lot, lot been there since a lot of them been at eighty one, eighty two. Mm. And so it was always always gonna change. Uh, and it, it wasn't But do you with. not think though, because obviously that age and Ethan here the couple yeah, of years yeah, ago yeah. and he's adamant yeah, 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 the yeah. feeling in the club yeah. with the band. Yeah. Meant the likes of Gary Stevens started well, looking Gary Trevor Stevens. Yeah, Gary, Gary didn't go. Gary went for other reasons, I think. Not, this under saying, hey, this yeah, is yeah, a player's yeah, point yeah, of view. Yeah, Howard yeah, obviously yeah, did. Yeah. The manager uh, went. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that either, because uh, as I say, the, one of the things about these books is it sounds like you only have like, very various narratives. Yeah. And you go back, I'm not so sure about mm-hmm. I mean, Gary went for, for personal reasons, and he's mm-hmm. quite happy to admit that. I mean, Trevor Stevens was still there in 1989. No, he was, yeah, 89. Four years after I still yeah, there. Yeah. Graeme Sharp's still there in 91. Kevin Zeedy's still there in 92. Mm. Blackcliffe's still there in 92. Howard, Howard is an intriguing one, really. And, and I, talk, I talk about Howard a lot in that he... He obviously... It, it's well known in 86, he, Barcelona was, was sniffing after him and, and, and I talk about that. They thought uh, he was going, didn't he? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. That's why he's sold in it, apparently. Well, so. there's, there's a story there. Whether it's and, real, yeah. And I think Barcelona played Howard a little bit there. Mm. I think Dito offered him the, the carpet stick <laughs> yeah. of the job. Sell, you're going to sell us Lineker, aren't mm, you, Howard? Yeah. And, and I think there was, Howard was interviewed by Barcelona on the same day as two other legends of the game, which I point out in this book, which has not been pointed out before. Right. And um, I, I think that tickled his fancy about working abroad. And he did have mm. genuine reasons. Mm. I think he wanted, I think he felt that being a manager, he wanted to be a coach. Yeah. But he wasn't being allowed to at Evan because the club was that big. I, I think also as well, he probably thought that the team needed the team needed a bit of rebuild. If you got we, we won the title and going ahead of ourselves mm-hmm. here, but in eighty seven won the title using twenty three players. Yeah. If you're if you if you're using twenty three players to win a title or in a season, mm-hmm. that's a team that probably needs restructuring. Sure, yeah. And I think Howard probably thought I've done hard yards once. Um the best manager in England, which he was by mm-hmm. some distance I think in eighty seven. What I uh, do uh, but I, and I could destroy everything I've done in the last six years by getting it wrong over the next two, mm. and and I think he didn't want want to do that. Yeah. And I think he also probably thought he still wanted the Barcelona gig, um, and he had a long he had a long run of relationship with Barcelona that lasted well into the nineties, um, and I I think he thought he's got a better job of getting that gig while he's in Spain. Yeah. And I also think he wanted the England job as well. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I think working abroad was an essential part of your CV, mm-hmm. uh, and also the only thing that made sense of it all, you know, Bill Bow was not. I mean, Bill Bow weren't in Europe; they just no. finished sixth from bottom. Mm-hmm. So, like Everton, historically uh, significant club, they've mm-hmm. been successful in the early eighties. But I think what came into it wasn't a reason he went, but it had to be worth Howard's while, and Howard got. You know, he, he was a bit disingenuous, Howard. He said, they've offered the same money as, as Evan have offered me, but in Spain you pay 20% tax, in this country you pay 60% tax. Yes. And he got a golden handshake off Bill Bow for joining, so mm. it had to be worth his while for him to go. For him to go, yeah. You know, it, it, I think he would have gone to Barcelona for less money in Everton, but right. for him to go to, to Bill Bow, it had to be financially worth as well, which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he had, he had all the clubs sniffing after him. Uh, Juventus was sniffing after him. I think if he'd not gone to Bilbao, he'd spoken with uh, Atletico Madrid. Um, okay. Real Madrid had been in for him in, in 86. So he was he was a wanted man. Mm. And I think at the time, that was the, the mis- mysterious part of it, Baz. You'd gone to Bilbao. Mm. We thought it a great club, yeah, but they're yeah. not Barcelona no, or Real Madrid. No. Or Juventus, and and I think that was the surprising thing. And one of the recurring things of the book is Howard, as, as you see later on, he makes a series of very, very strange and surprising Same. decisions mm. from '87 onwards for a period of six years. Yeah, and that was one of them. I, 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 I say it's a bit like um, the man '86, '87 Villa finished right at the bottom of the first division. They're sort of like the, a Bilbao type club. It's like, what would they, what would you thought if the manager of say Real Madrid won the Spanish title, turned up for Aston Villa yeah, the next yeah. season, and that's what it was viewed as? Yeah. Top of the table in England, but you've gone to, gone to Bilbao. Bilbao. Yeah. You know, a big club. Yeah. But they're not not you know you've had three of the you know you know gold plated clubs in Europe mm. after you, and you turn up for Bilbao. Right? Yeah. So there was lots of reasons, lots mm. of reasons for it, and um, I th- think the absence of Europe 
came into it, but it wasn't the reason. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think there was other. He came yeah. back to Man City, didn't he? Years later, of course. Yeah. And they were in Europe. So, yeah. but I, th- I think there was definitely the England thing, and mm. I think he wants maybe he's had aspirations to be Barcelona. And, and, Marce- and I talk about his long-standing relationship with uh, Barcelona, Barcelona and Bill Bow as well. That went went into the nineties, really. I, I think in the early nineties he wanted to go back. How do you, you know? view the eighty-six season, eighty-five, eighty-six? Because oh, obviously Everton, yeah. you signed Gary Lineker, which was a big sign. Yeah. I actually thought Everton were by far the best team in the. Well, because yeah. I thought eighty-seven. Liverpool were better than 86. Yeah, the, the, there's an argument to say that we won the title we shouldn't have. And, and they, they won the title we should have won. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. um, yeah I, I get that. Um, I think there was probably, I think we've, I think 85, 86, we don't really need just to stay in the game because mm. we lost Reid for most of the season. Mm. We lost Mountfield for most of the season. The worst of it all was losing was Neff fair. in the March. And people say, it, yeah. people say, oh, we had like, you know, seven clean sheets and stuff like that. But the team, Played a lot deeper to protect Bobby Mims, yeah, and I think like um, I think like that at the end of the season when we want to go to wins, you know, we need to win a few games. I think you know we really weren't as positive as what we should have been. Forest and I think, away, oh yeah, Forest yeah. away was it was it. And no one really speaks about Forest away because it always yeah. goes to Oxford. But yeah. had we won a Forest, did it change that? Well, yeah, that yeah, again, yeah, and we were deep. Yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah. And then that last two games, it comes out in a minute. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I think we did fantastically well just to stay in the game. Yeah, yeah. Really, uh, that was the season United had that table charge start. Yeah. I mean, on a great run after Christmas, but by sort of the March, we lose Neville. Linux is injured. Mm. Um, yeah. Reid comes back, but he's not fit. Mm. Kevin Seeder was not fit all season, basically. Yeah. Um, and we were really showing, we were f- flaying at the edges. Mm. Derek Malfoy was out until March. He'd come back, he wasn't fit. Yeah. So by the time you get to the April, we've got, we're head of Liverpool. Bracewell was carrying Bracewell the, the injury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Newcastle, and didn't he? Yeah. I think we took our eyes off the ball, really. Nice. That we, we sort of got kind of caught on the way by Liverpool's run. We went on this great run mm. after we beat them in, in the February. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We just thought, that's it. Um, we, we've won it now and I think we got caught on the way isn't it? and I think we, we had the game in hand and I just thought we, like, we, if we win our game in hand we'd be champions mm. but by the time the game, they came out which is West Ham, West Ham yeah. yeah we got beat at Oxford mm. and the game that we should have uh, we, well we, we should have got beat we were, we were poor Does that, that's another thing Lineker had missed loads of chances he had one chance Lineker had at Oxford mm. really one on one with the keeper and he had the keeper he didn't miss like these oh, three or four chances no didn't want and we were poor on the night we should have got beat 3-0 no. and I think Howard Howard took his eye off they the ball they won a Leicester that night as well didn't yeah, he yeah yeah Howard, like Howard, um, Howard took his eye off the ball I think he was too defensive away from home and we needed to go for wins but it was never Howard's style I was talking about this before we came on there maybe. Mm. To, to go out and go on the front foot away from home mm. he was very very conservative and the Mr. Fine thing in those two games is Inchie being a great super sub hadn't he mm. uh, Agent Heath mm. And he brought him on five minutes from the end of Forest and five minutes from the end of Oxford, which I thought was strange. Yeah. And um, we then we then lose it. We go up to the cup final, and I'd like to know how many of the eleven are actually fit the mm. cup final. Uh, but it would be three. And um, I, you know, winning one nil, and I was in the Liverpool end. <laughs> like, uh, and um, we win a one nil, and. She the misses. Yeah, yeah, almost it was makes it two nil. Just and after like that the, time, yeah, and the header from Sharp we, we, as well. We, we had Liverpool where we wanted them, mm. but they scored in the off Gary Stevens' mistake. Yeah, and this and Rush scored. Now, as we all know, at the time in Liverpool, Rush scored for Liverpool never lost. No, nope. and the, the, they can draw the line between the eighty six Cup final and the two thousand and twelve semi final, where you win them one nil and control in the game. Yeah, but the, as soon as they equalise, just think, Lips. Lips, yeah. And I, 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 I'm quite critical of players in the book um, nice, about okay. it. Um, and put, I, I, I won't say they bottled it, but mm-hmm. I've ex- I would have expected the team of our reputation to, 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 yeah, to, to have, 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 uh, to have uh, done better. And I think Howard took a bit of the blame. He took Harry Stevens off straight yeah. away. Yeah. He brought in Chiong. So it's one all, 20 mm-hmm. minutes left. The game's still in the balance and you're now playing three at the back. You're not mm-hmm. getting beat 2 on Howard. No, no. And we ended up playing Brace, I think, at left back or whatever, mm-hmm. and Pat went into the middle of defence with, with um, and it was just it, it, they ran 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 a stragger in the middle of the park. Moby, if you remember, had controlled the game because mm-hmm. we we just lost all shape mm-hmm. when we didn't need to. And I think Howard Howard's inexperience shone through mm-hmm. in that because and. and because when you have a look at the two benches, Liverpool, you've got like twenty five years of success. Loads of people there 
I've seen it all done all European Cup finals, all yeah, that type yeah. in the big moments, knowing how to react. Where Everton, you've got how being a great manager was, and Collins a great coach, always was those two, and they've only been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Their bench, they know how to win. The yeah. winners, they've been doing it for decades. Mm. And I think that also came out yeah, yeah. in the 86 Cup final. And uh, the, the thing is, in a great, great, great scheme of things, it was a great season for us. Mm. But it's you won the double at the end mm. and, and I'm quite critical of Howard I, I'm exercising at the end of the season I think he, he, should have been, he should have done more do you? yeah yeah, yeah, you yeah. believe that yeah because yeah. obviously don't think... we, sh- we should have had the double the year before yeah we? yeah yeah, yeah. Legs, but and to do with, I, yeah, I think yeah. at the end of the season quite a few games away from home it's too conservative when yeah. we needed to win yeah, yeah. and it was never Howard's way to go on a, on a you know never to, to go out and really push on away from home it is mad isn't it because yeah. that like you said before that forest games just no one well, really talks one. about it yeah yeah i was at that game uh got and they were they were very like they weren't no, they were in the forest of the late 70s no, no. um and i was it was a lovely day wasn't it mm-hmm. and um i uh i was at that game at graham sharp do you remember the ball bounce it's, it's his name but it's, it's his name, post yeah and the last 10 minutes of that game was frantic. I watched it again. I've got I've got a DVD of the game. And mm. I think one of the things that season is, is like Lineker, which you have to talk about, is that people say oh, we changed the style of the team for Lineker. I don't think we did. Mm. I mean, I think some of that came was for the fact that Reed was gone and mm. we played too deep. And so we naturally played deep. And I think Lineker and Sharp were therefore a little bit more isolated. Mm. Not Not... Uh, DCL isolated, put a little no, bit more isolated, no. and um, I think it just gave that DCL pressure. would be overcrowded. Yeah, they've got yeah. Lineker and Sharp, like uh, absolutely. But yeah, yeah I, th- I think we we weren't as high up the pitch mm, the press as much. Been, yeah. And uh, most of Lineker's goals, people think, oh, the Lineker goal was like get it from deep, ping the ball mm. over the defence and so on. That's super. No. I think it was headers. Mm. I think he scored fourteen headers. Obviously, forty goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, goals they would have scored in eighty four, eighty five. Mm. And I know he said that. And I think he said the same. I he couldn't remember Howard ever saying and before uh, before like in a game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like this is what we're gonna do, lads, we're gonna hit the ball. I never said no. that at all. No. And that was if, and so that's another myth of thing that we changed the style of play. We did a little bit. But it certainly wasn't so with the extent. I remember remember his goal against Luton in the replay. Oh, I mean, I mean, that, goal, was a, yeah. that was a long ball. That's, yeah, and, on and the that's side, long, but that was very much exceptional. That, yeah, it was, was wasn't it? It wasn't the wasn't He never loads. scored. If you have a look at most of his goals that season, and I, I saw all of them, all 40, mm. is, um, you know, they tended to be from crosses from out wide. Not Andy Gray, Graham Sharp crosses, but get to the final and speed mm. the ball across. And we had a few in. where we slid yeah. them in, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I remember he scored. I remember Coventry near Christmas just before yeah, we beat them the three well. one. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. I yeah. think he got two that day. I was yeah. there. He was a uh, Gary was a totally underrated player and still is, I think. My I'll I Heath loved them. Loved yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. My favourite player of all time, yeah. Lineker's I think is the best centre forward I've seen that yeah. car he yeah. sharp was great and all but yeah. Lineker yeah. was just incredible like goal scorer. Yeah and um, I think selling him in eighty six you know, we spoke about the Barcelona thing. He meant Salomon then. I think we thrown Rondon in. I was going to say Salomon, Salomon, yeah, yeah. He's over. I've got a bit of a cold <laughs> at the moment. I think, I think Salomon, Salomon yeah, yeah. I think, I'm not sure if they give it the right message. No, I think, not to be honest sure. with you. Yeah. Mm. I think Bayern sent the right message. Yeah. Like, we're now going to push on. But Salomon, we should have got another replacement. We've still won the league with them in 87. Yeah, but it's, if he'd have been there 87, 88, 88, yeah, yeah, would have yeah. been different you know mm. we, we stopped scoring goals yeah, we did didn't we yeah and, and, and the prestige of having Lineker playing for you in terms of being a big club mm. and I think his departure was damaged just on so many it, levels yeah. that we don't didn't really appreciate at the time because mm. it's like we won the title in 86, 87 and um, we have spoken to Agent yeah. you know Agent played uh, all that season mm. he'd had a cup to do with Howard in 85, 86 about mm. being on the bench and but for and six, and you know yourself, as you were going, a six, a seven, we should never have won the title. We we lost it eighty five, eighty six when we should have won it. Mm. We won eighty six, eighty seven. We're nine points behind Liverpool. Mm. We've had a load of injury problems. We've never not played till October. Um, we've had Reedy's been out again. Um, he scored, just, he come back and scored the winner against Spurs. That was eighty five, eighty six. That, yeah, that yeah, one, yeah, he's yeah, remember yeah. that late goal, yeah, uh, for ages. And he gave the back passes to yeah, you, he liked yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. But and then you know, basically being out, we lost Brace mm. all season. Yeah. And, and the difference in eighty six, eighty seven was, is what happened was before Christmas and and Howard. It happened in the derby where we had Kevin. People, we had brought, put loads of players in. They were decent, but yeah. they weren't going to win titles when Kevin Langley, Neil Adams, mm. done the job. 
Hall power. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did when he titled yeah, and he yeah, played yeah. all season. Mm. And and how it ends up playing Sheedy in the middle for the first time ever yeah. at Everton in '86 before Christmas, and he was just fantastic, mm. Kevin, because he was, um, you know, he would give us the flair that we didn't have with. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. didn't give us the running, mm. they give us the flair no, in the know. middle of the park. Yeah, <laughs> but he, 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 I didn't realize, I think he shocked everybody that he had a, a reputation for not really fancying it. But he, he used to wear uh, he he, he was in Kevin and his, his vision. And, and you know, and well, it, do you it, remember that one? The little scoop for yeah, Nathan it, Twally over oh, yeah, the shoulder goal against Norwich, Norwich, we beat them 4 yeah. 0, was it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and. So, so what happened was, it, it's very talented, people have not seen it, but it's, it's well worth looking at, because I've never seen a goal like it, certainly Goodison, mm. is he got the ball in front of the Norris defensive dead to the area, mm. and and he's, he does do it like a scoop, it's like yeah. a Phil Mickelson, like, like, <laughs> yeah. he lumps all the way in the air, yeah. and then she runs through the defence, yeah. and over into his head, and to be fair, it's great by Kevin, it was a fantastic finish by him. Yeah, it was, yeah. And... Um, over the shoulder, yeah. Body, yeah. John Keats had in the Express say uh, the Brazilians couldn't have done it better, mm. and um, he 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 gives that extra flair, yeah. as I say, imagination that we didn't have in eighty four, eighty five, and you know you remember you it well eighty six, eighty seven. There was a Christmas between about late November till mid January, best football I've ever seen. I haven't seen play mm. without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, much 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 better than eighty four, eighty five. Look at the results there. Like we're always winning games three 0 four 0 five one mm. every week home and away and that was primarily because Sheedy had, yeah. um, in the middle Trevor he'd been poor in 85-86 mm. I think he missed Stavon Reedy to, to lay it off to uh, he he kicked on mm. in 6-87 and Inchi was now now playing and those three were yeah. the difference mm. but and then, and then in 86-87 we, we saying that that's not saying this in the book is we, we ended up winning the title and the difference in 84-85 as well is though people forget about that as a championship compared to 84 85, yeah. is most of the players in 84 85 are better players two years later because they're at the peak. Yeah, yeah. Neville's a certain comes back a better keeper. Yeah. Ratcliffe's certainly a better defender. Gary Stevens is definitely a better mm. right back. Trevor's a better all round player. Mm. Kevin's a better all round player. So, like, a lot of the players are better, the more mature. The experience. They're, they're, they're at that, their yeah. peak. Mm. Uh, they've got the confidence of winning the title in, in 85. And that's re- I think that's reflected in, in the title win. And we Liverpool give it a little bit to us. I was really mm. poor Liverpool team at the end of the season. But we still you know, we were nine points behind our bit with two games in hand. And and, and to be fair, the psychological effect mm. of losing a double yeah. the year before. Mm. And that could have affected teams, but yeah. it, I think it was a great, great, great win on that basis. Yeah. But it was a bit scary thinking the March. I think we thought it was it was going. We thought it was going to Liverpool that yeah, going to win the title. Yeah, it yeah. would have been a killer, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, to happen again. Two years and not a very good Liverpool team. Yeah, and um, but we 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 held on and um, we won it quite comfortably. Mm. We won it by nine points, mm. but it wasn't really nine points. And um, it was being close up until the end of April. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. you know, and it's the first time um, two clubs have finished in the top two places in three successive seasons. Yeah. Because that was the biggest, you know, up until the Arsenal, Wenger and Ferguson, mm. that was the biggest domestic rivalry. Yeah, in four year, four or five years mm. of any any two clubs in English really? football history, Everton Liverpool, top two in the league every season, mm. and always in cup finals. Yeah, and um, we had big moments, didn't we? And Wayne Clark and Arthur. Yeah, that was the big like game. That yeah, was that was the, that game, was the big that game when that was like, it turned on that weekend. Because we won Arsenal mm. and um, it took an age. I remember being behind the goal. It took forever yeah. coming in. They yeah. chipped it over the keeper, mm. and they got mad and they got beat thrown by Wimbledon. Wimbledon beat them, yeah. With yeah, a I remember massive shot. How Howard said Neil Poynton had just come back in the team, and, and Howard said that um, we found out. I remember sort of in the days we had Sanchez the radios at the game, and he said uh, Poynton came over to him. Uh, there'd been a chair at the Everton end, even though nothing's going on a hybrid. Mm. And, and he's going, boss, why is he chairs? <laughs> You know, and how it goes, you know, he'll learn, he'll learn. He'll like, learn you know, yeah. found out that uh, Alan Cork had had the winner later mm-hmm. the death at, at the cop end. Yeah. And then we won at Chelsea the following week, 2 1. Uh, Zico Harper, fantastic, yeah. uh, fantastic goal. And um, it's great to say by Neville in that game from Kerry Dixon, and then we go up the other end and score. And so the wind was in our sails yeah. at the end of that season. Compared to 12 months earlier, everybody's fit, Nev's fit, mm-hmm. Reed's fit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody's fit. Yeah. Bits they weren't 12 months earlier. And I think that's why we kicked on. So um, what you're saying is 
But the likes of Man City and Arsenal now, Liverpool can blow nine point leads. They possibly, possibly. <laughs> Let's hope yeah, history repeats yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I think, I think yeah. I think Everton are a better team than Man City yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but I, I, I think I, they can, but it just shows it can. I mean, we had had eight points the year before. Of course, yeah. You know, mm. and. Um, so it yeah. can change quite quickly, yeah. and yeah, I thought that was a fantastic win. You don't win, mm. you don't win. Managers don't win titles with twenty-three players. No, you know, some of the players who won title winners medals they mm. are average, mm. really. But it was it was it was one of the great management feats I think in twentieth century football. Howard and Colin, yeah, winning the title, well. you know, and it's not given the credit I think it's deserved. Howard, obviously, we talked about it before. Yeah. Went off to Bilbao at the end of the season, which was a bit. There was a bit of a shock at the time, obviously. Yeah. Um, what did you think about him? What was your reaction? I, I was a kid, so it was yeah. just I couldn't believe it because we just won the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that the line was peddled. Well, it's because there's no European football, and he wants yeah. to test himself on yeah, the yeah. European stage. So you just sort of go, and yeah. I guess being a kid, you just think, well. Colin Harvey's still in, he's been with Howard and yeah. he's like played for Everton and won the league at yeah. Everton and it, we won it all because, because of Colin. Colin. Yeah, exactly. So therefore you're thinking, well, that, that continuity. And, and that was continuity. the that was the that was the thing, wasn't it? You know, I'm obviously a bit older than you. And that was it. We'll be all right with Colin. He's the brains behind mm. the operation, so we're gonna be all we're right. All right so, yeah. And I don't think you look back in it now and you think, Well, Howard's gone if you weren't around the time, that must have been terrible, you know, mm. you know. Everybody crying and yeah, like yeah. screaming. It wasn't like that at all. Mm. People were just oh, yeah, fine. We'll be, we'll be okay. It's Colin, mm. uh, and and this thing of cult of continuity that everybody mm. wanted from Liverpool had done it for Liverpool years. Have done it, yeah. But the difference is, as I say in the book, uh, is Liverpool have done it because referring back to the '86 Cup final, they had nine, ten backroom staff who've Ooh, seen it for yeah, twenty yeah. years. Yeah. So if one of them goes, yeah. It doesn't happen. really change. No. The, they're all, all the brain trust is still there. Yeah, yeah. Everton's brain trust was Howard and Colin, and Howard's gone. Mm. So there is no brain trust anymore. Yeah, and he brings sure. ends up bringing in Mick Lyons and Terry Darakos as coaches, and Peter Reid as player coach. I don't think he even wanted to be a player coach. He still wants to play for England. Mm. And they're not Colin. You yeah. know, you're not going to replace Colin as the coach. That. And, and Colin found out that, old, you know, the oldest adage, which is saying in the prefaces, you know, that. Uh, all managers can coach, but not all coaches can manage. Mm. And, and um, Colin found that found that out the hard way, sure, yeah. uh, you know. And, and some of his dis- coaching, I mean, you know, like Don Howe, great coach mm. with England mm. and Arsenal for years. Don Howe was free in '87, and I think Colin was a big admirer of Don Howe's methods, which is about all the press and stuff that yeah. he, he got off Don Howe. And I think Don Howe also knew the England players in the team because he worked with them in England. I think Don Howe would have been a great appointment as. On the coaches, I thought yeah, they're giving it a bit, a bit, a bit of weight. Yeah, you know, yeah, some something's a bit, bit of gravitas, you know. Which, with all due respect, McLean's and Terry Dadakos are not going to give that to you. Great yeah. Everton, that the Alps not to say. Mm-hmm. I think Don Howe would have been a good appointment. And from then on, and and, and the other thing he had problem he had, which we well know, is it's a team that needs a little bit of reconstruction. So he's got a choice: did you buy any players or not in the mm-hmm. first summer? And he doesn't, does he? Mm-hmm. That's the, you know, that's the problem. That, that was the problem because across the park they bought Barnes, Beardsley, they wanted to get all just nearby Houghton. And, got Houghton. and all of a sudden, be, from being like that for three years, mm. they've now shot off. We're champions and we, yeah, yeah, do we, we don't do anything with it. Mm. And he, he was in an awkward position, Colin, I think, because I think he, uh, he got two choices, haven't you? Don't buy anything, anybody and get accused of letting things drift. Yeah. Or buy, buy a few players. Doesn't work out, and it be you've broken up a championship winning team. Yeah, so yeah. we thought, what's the least path of least resistance? resistance yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so you've got O level physics or whatever that is, mm-hmm. right? yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, he chose the the earlier option, yeah. which proved to be wrong. Yeah. Um, and I think also as well, if he'd have brought players in in his first summer, because he was relative, uh, he, he plays that he'd work with might have viewed them as a threat. Mm. He's got to try and convince the players he's worked with that he's a manager. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and the manager's manager's relationship, as you well know, but mm-hmm. people say he's with him as a manager. A difference when you are as a coach, yeah, they're two yeah. different jobs. And I think he might have made it difficult for him. So I think he took the easiest option yeah, for him. Yeah. But that was the wrong option for Everton, as yeah. it transpired. And by the time he racks twelve months later, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, and he brings the wrong players anyway. You know, as you well, as you well know, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, Neil McDonald, Tom yeah, Scotty, yeah, yeah. Hugh McCall. Nevin, you know, Nevin. all decent players, mm, but, but not, nowhere the near the, the level that the players were, that they were, you know, there to replace who, who mm. won cha- championships. And we get that, we get that thing, don't we, which has been spoken about quite a bit about the 
split in the dressing room between yeah. the senior players who won stuff and the, the new recruits who hadn't, mm. who, because of the ITV deal with the first division in 1988, which took the tally money up by six times, they were all on money, on more, more money. money than people who, who won who stuff. Won stuff yeah. And so it's understandable yeah. that's going to cause yeah, friction. Yeah. Mm. And um, a, a more experienced man like Howard would have just toughed it out yeah. and managed with Colin being very inexperienced, not having a lot of support. It's a bit beyond them. Because there's also, uh, it'd be interesting about it, she says about this, in, even in the 85 team, there was a little bit of a split. Mm. There, was, there was Collins players and Howard's players, so the players who come through the reserves with yeah. Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the players that Howard had brought in who Howard's men. Mm. And like, so players like Sharpie, Kevin Ratcliffe, and to a degree, Neville, their relationship was with Colin, it wasn't with Howard, even though mm. Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe would say, wasn't he? Like, mm. He didn't really have that close relationship with Howard, no. even though he was he was the captain. Yeah. His close relationship was with, with, with Colin. Colin yeah. And it's interesting to see in Colin's times, what's they all stay, all the all Howard's men go. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and so there was even, never mind the split between the 85 players and the new recruits on the column, there was also a split, I think, in the 85 team. Not a damaging split, mm. it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. who their loyalties were. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and I think that came into play because Colin ends up to keep the dressing room suite, ends up giving plays. Sharpie, Ratcliffe, Sheedy, mm. you know, big contracts and then the late 20s, which yeah. as we well know, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, Does it? We've seen that Evan and the last one. And there's a little bit of the, what happens with Colin in the end of eight, the 80s and when Howard takes over in, in the early 90s, it's a little bit what's happened with Everton since about 2019, where Colin had spent all the money mm. on not so great players. Giving them too much, too much wages, yeah. and two years later, when it's not worked, they can't get rid of them. Yeah. And how yeah, it can't buy anybody, yeah. and that's a, that's a tale we're sadly familiar with. Yeah, aren't we? History repeating itself. itself. And, yeah. and well, you know, you know yourself, Paz, you've been around. You know, there's no new things in football. They just, they just no. repeat itself. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. I, I say that you know, going off on the tangents is. Um, and there's a big wrap-up chapter at the end when I talk about John Moore's time at Everton, mm. and, and 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 talk about Moore's. I got into Everton in the first place, and as, as owner of Littlewoods, who was Britain's biggest private company, tell you how big Littlewoods were when he when he got involved in Everton in 1960. Their their relationship and size to Everton in 1960 would be like Tesco taking over Everton now. Like that, that's that, and you that's think how, I'm yeah, yeah, you think how I'm, I'm, that, yeah. That, yeah, you know, yeah. that's how big Littlewoods were. Yeah, and Moore's takes over the club because uh, he sees that there's new horizons in football. Yeah. The television starting to come into the game. The maximum wage is the players had is going to end because, and that would mean all the best players are going to go to the biggest clubs who right. can pay the most money. Mm -hmm. But also because the jet age, as it was called, is European football starting. Mm -hmm. And there's a quote. There's a quote. Um, uh, the European Super League is starting. And the European Super League is starting. Barcelona are in it. Real Madrid are in it. It, it it just depends now who else is going to join them, and that is from June 1960. Wow! And there we are. That's 60 years later. So the same things repeating itself. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. yeah. And so in the early 60s, we we'll talk about you know a Premier League in England, a European Super League. So mm. and that's why he got into it. You say, yeah, because he just saw the advantage and he just see horizons open up. Mm. And so, you know, and and, and, that's, and yet when that's he a, went, we've been calling the shop. Mentality. Well, that's it, and there's a quote in the back of of from Moore, which you read before, yeah. and from 1960 about mm. you know we want it to be successful. If it's not successful, people will be sacked, including that's myself. In 1960, yeah, what he said, including yeah, myself. myself, yeah. Mm. And in '94, where the book ends, it's the win of the game, and we're talking about Evan could be, you know, Evan sort of being one of the founder members and and, and pushes for one of the better phrases of the Premier League mm. could end up not being invited to the party that they've uh, you know they've done so much to set up. We'll come back to that just yeah. in a sec. So obviously Collins' reign ends unsuccessfully, and Howard comes back. I yeah. mean, you were saying about curious decisions he made and the relationship, oh, yeah, yeah. relationship with Barca. What have you just briefly? What have, what do you mean by by those? I, I think I think with Barca. Mm. I think well, I mean, he was approached by Barca oh, four times. Right. Oh, yeah. So why did Latest he Latest in 92. <laughs> uh, AC, he was AC, AC6. He said he got offered the job. Yeah, I'm yeah. not so sure that was the case. Okay. Because um, somebody there um, from Boston, hierarchy, said a few things. Mm. Uh, he then got approached again in the summer of 86 
and turned it okay. down. I think because he thought if he if they left the summer eighty six, he would have thought, well, I'm getting out of Everton. We've just, you well, know, like we've lost, yeah, you know, we've, we've lost. lost and yeah. I think being as a, a former Everton player, mm -hmm. having a relationship with the club, I think he thought that would be seeing the jumping ship a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was the summer thing Real Madrid offered them a gig, uh, and then at Bilbao he was offered the job in '88 uh, again, and I thought he, he was going to go. Uh, and he, he pulled out. Um, I think he, he felt the ties. Bill Bow was sort of stuck yeah. by him. Yeah. And I think I think he was one of the attractions to Bill Bow, which I saw sort of like when we were talking about before is they were great the great people of Bill Bow. Mm. It's yeah. a proper club like yeah. Everton. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a proper club. The mm. people are fantastic and stuff. It's a great place to live. And I think he felt he would his emotional losses was to them. Uh, even though it was well worth as well, and in '92 as well. In in I tell you, in you know when we got beat Chel by Chelsea one nil in the game when Tony Cotty missed the penalty in the FA Cup in January '92. Yeah. You know where Howard was then the night before. He was in the director's box with Bill Barr watching them play Barcelona. Yeah. Wow. So we've got our biggest game in the season on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And Howard's in Howard's in Northern Spain on the Saturday night Saturday watching night. Bill Barr playing Barcelona. Barca. Probably speaking to both clubs, both of them. Yeah. And, and 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 I think that was one of the reasons why I think he was indulged a little bit because he'd won success in the mid eighties, mm. and by this time Philip Carter's gone, and we've got yeah. Doctor Davis Marsh, the golfer, and GP in. He was probably a little bit intimidated by Howard. Mm. Certainly didn't have the you know the the um, the forceful personality and, and where with business where with all of of Carter. Mm. I think I think Howard was indoors a little bit. You don't let your manager before the biggest game of the season not, go not to you sure. know. And, 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 that's new about it, you know, and it's not. It doesn't look good, especially no. when we get beat one nil. I could beat one nil on on the Sunday, and so Howard was indoors a little bit, and uh, but he he come a surprising decision because in Man City, so he's doing really well at Man mm -hmm. City. He go he gone there in eighty nine. He he's got a good young squad. He's got like quite a few good pl mm -hmm. young players, which is not happening at Everton. Paul Lake, David White, people yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, I think they were fifth in the table. And he and I, th I think what had happened is he had ideas for the, the England job, mm. um, and Graham Taylor, uh, Graham Taylor got it in ninety yeah. ahead of Howard. Yeah, and I think Howard felt he got stitched up by Peter Swales, who was his chairman, who was also deputy chairman of the International okay. Committee yeah. of the FA. Right. And uh, Swales had a conflict of interest, and I think he thought that. He said, yeah, no, he said like he said no, manager. yeah, yeah, yeah. He pointed the FA in Taylor's direction because he'd be losing Howard. Yeah. And I think he had that in his back of his mind. I right. think that probably rankled with him. Mm -hmm. there, there's a turning point now. And it, there's a, there's a, it, that 87 to 90 thing with Howard, is, it's really interesting. There's so many things that could have happened that didn't. And one of them is, uh, happens in Katowice in Poland in, in, in the fight, England's final qualifying game in 89. In that, we've got to get a draw to get to Italian get, 90. Yeah, yeah. In the last minute, uh, goalish so we're through the poles hit the bar right. right okay and the referee blows us about five seconds later mm -hmm. that had gone in Robson would have been out been there's gone. no in Italian 90 it's Howard's gig yeah Howard would have got it nice absolutely without was a shadow of a doubt yeah, Howard was lined up to be yeah, the next yeah. manager Um, because I think they'd already they'd already sounded the most in yeah, yeah. and um, that width of a crossbar yeah, changes his career. Yeah. England gets and it's, to the, it's the final, and, and then think other oh, can kick off in football on the mm. back of that that affect them. And so it's at City, and I think come and then there's it's a really interesting week. This and I don't really give to because it's a really interesting no, no, story. Don't. But he's at City, and then he sort of gets finds out a little bit that Colin's going to get sacked. And yeah. Well, it's a really interesting story, which well, is typical, away, which is typical Howard yeah. involves several drinking establishments <laughs> and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think uh, I think he 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 was just seduced by going back to heaven. I think yeah, he, I think yeah. he was annoyed with with uh, Swales, and he mm. does that famous thing about the, the marriage, marriage you know, yeah. you know. And uh, I do say though that in the summer of nineteen ninety, there was a story. I think it was probably true. Everton had conversations in Stockholm with one of the biggest names in the game to be, and I'm going to say not at the time, as in the history of the game, mm -hmm. to become manager. And uh, I talk about that in, in the book. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. You have to and you have to okay. buy the book to get to read Good that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Play. And um, yeah, one of one of the one of the few things. Yeah, there's quite a few bits in it that I think uh, you know people read and find that this is new.
Yeah, yeah that's really. I found him with me. I'd like. I found. I'd think I know a bit, but I'm, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then you go down the post and tell him, I said, but you didn't know this, you know. Because <laughs> the one thing I didn't know, and it's not in the book because mm. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't tie up the loose ends on it. In '89, uh, there was a story that Liverpool were after Howard. Yeah, mm. uh, because there's a alleged fallout between Dag Leach and, and the Anfield board, and uh, but I think. There was a possibility that the feelers were put out for Howard, yeah, Howard. between because he was between jobs between Bill Bow and Manchester yeah. City uh, by Peter Robertson, who's sadly departed now, yeah. and that's entirely feasible, and uh, that would have been interested because when soon as got sacked, Howard was fifth favourite for the job. That's mad, isn't it? You know, Joe Joe was fourth favourite mm. when uh, Kenny left in ninety one. With the Liverpool job, you know, so it wasn't. It's yeah, not as wasn't. outlandish as what yeah, you think. Yeah, and Howard would have took as a different story. Mm. Whether, but it's interesting. But he was on the list. Inter- yeah, I didn't put that in the book because mm. it's one of them tabloid things. And I did speak yeah. to James who did, but it couldn't. It would have just looked a bit light without a little bit. Yeah. It needed more meat. Story, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, but that was interesting. So yeah, and mm. so, so ninety, everyone's expecting Joe Rowe to come in. Yeah. How it turns up that. in the days when he could surprise everyone. Yeah. You're thinking, wow. We're back. Yeah, we're back. Mm. And that was it. Mm. And especially when he brings Colin back. Yeah. And everything. Like, right, everything's back to normal. We cut on where he left off. But three years long time of football bass. Mm. And as we well know, Colin had changed, Howard had changed, they had different experiences. The other thing which uh, I talk about, I'm not sure when the board appointed Howard, they knew he was going to appoint Colin as coach. Nice. And okay. I think there was I think there was a bit of disquiet over that. Because yeah. um, yeah. Colin's had he's fell out with a lot of players. Yeah, yeah. And he's not going to coach him. The yeah. dressing room splits, and and so yeah, yeah. and and then and it's quite obvious, wasn't it? That within twelve months, yeah, you can't was, buy players. Not much happening, was it? Uh, it, it I, I do a whole chapter on the four all draw with Liverpool because mm. that's it, so totally important within Merseyside football mm. uh, and the overall story of football in the city in that that thirty years, um, and that's sort of the end of the era. That dominance has gone because they do yeah. sharp his last goals for Everton. Uh, that yeah. four-all draw, four-four. I didn't know until I was researching, but there were also Peter Beardsley's last goals for Liverpool. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, so a lot of players. Well, that's their often that in the mid eighties. Yeah. That was their last derby. Yeah. And um, and also I think it, it, in terms of the formation of the Premier League, because it was on Sky. I think they thought, well, the coverage that they got because after Kenny resigned, yeah, yeah. they got a lot of coverage. You thought, yeah, this is where we we go in there anyway. But I think it's yeah. just uh, I just been given a bit more. Mm. Uh, give determination to to get the gig, and and also as well, I think in the early nineties, Howard only had to beat Liverpool in the mid eighties, and not a very good Liverpool to mm-hmm. be fair. Um, but by the end of the nineties, you well now Arsenal win the titles, Fergie's got United mm-hmm. going, Leeds come back and champions within two years. Mm-hmm. Within the year of Howard turning up again as manager in ninety, Jack Walker walks into Blackburn Black, with Kenny Daglish with a with a open checkbook. Mm-hmm. John all turns up at Newcastle with Kevin Keegan. Money. So he had one rival yeah. at trophies in the mm. mid eighties. By the early nineties, there's probably five or six rivals. Yeah. Most of them have got more. Well, they've all got more money than you. Mm. It was never going to happen. The, the change in the game. Yeah, it just changed anyway. And I, I think the actual change of football itself. I mm. think how it seemed like to, to waste time and take this thing out of games with the back pass, back pass law. Of course, yeah. You know, he could just pass the ball back to the mm. goalkeeper and he picks it up. That ended. That they killed kill Liverpool as they well. Killed, yeah, I just, you yeah. took the words right yeah. out of me. Because how I think when we spoke about uh, the last book, I was talking about how much of Howard's game in the in the mid late in the mid eight in the mid eighties mm. with Everton, especially yeah. when you had to away from home, big games was was the Liverpool model. Mm. Take this thing out of the game. Yeah. Pass the ball, pass the ball back as many times as possible to the goalkeeper in the first mm. half. I mean, the big game at Spurs in eighty five when they've made that save, mm. we passed the. Ball pack seventeen times in the first half to the goalkeeper, you know. Did we? Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. and so is. I, I remember talking to Pad about Harry Catrick in the first book, mm. saying why went wrong for Catrick in the early seventies. Man, this is you get ten years at the top. I, I firmly believe this. Certainly then, maybe not so now because the game changed. And Catrick had done his 10 years at the top in the early seventies. Think Howard in the early nineties. He's coming to have an eighty one. Yeah. His ten years was up. Because of the players change, you change, mm. the age gap between you and the players is wider, mm. you've got less in common with them. New rivals, new tactics, 
all that type of thing. Mummy, yeah, yeah, all that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it makes it far more difficult. I think it's still the same now, no? No, no. I think I think now managers manage their time more. I think yeah. got more of a backup. Of course, yeah, yeah. But, you know, they, but they're just the coach now, really. Yeah. Then the manager, you had everything. everything. You're far more savvy about tactics and and, and so on. Well, I still think there's no one's the truth in it. Mm. Um, you know, and um, but and, and people say years out, year off and stuff. Yeah. So I think. Yeah, it's extended, but I still mm. think the overall thing is there. That's I think true, you, yeah. yeah, that you've only got a finite time, mm. unless you're Ferguson. And um, but I think I think that was always Howard and the game was caught up with them. Caught I, up. I, he was, I think he was probably yeah. I think he was yeah. I think he'd gone <laughs> for one's the best of mm. I also I'm obliged to, and, and you have to cover. I think some of his off the field field activities probably. Didn't help. I think. I think. I think one of his problems was in the early eighties, mid eighties. It was all about the team, socialising. You know, down the pub. It's about the team spirit. Mm. In the early nineties, it was changing. Changing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, well, that was that, a bit later. Yeah, but she has decided to do Shane, it on field yeah, and Shane stuff. Done and, and, and coming in. Yeah, yeah. And players. You know, some players kicked back on it. Some mm. players wanted to do it. And how did he's been reintroduced the drinking culture was back, and I think a few of the players didn't didn't like it, and yeah. I think. That was damaging. I mean, Schumer McCall in this book said there was two games that he played in where he knows knows that the players were hung over the the uh, the day of the game. It's you not know, good, does it? You know, I think some of that some of that stuff that work for you. To, yeah. The game was changing, and players were like, the money in the, the players were fitter. The, yeah, the players had more money, and I, had, I don't think he cared as much. Mm. I, I think I think he found that. I think I mean, Schumer. I mean, there's an really interesting story. I remember Schumer saying when he was at Liverpool. He he came back in the early nineties, the same at the time as Howard, had success ten, you know, seven, eight years before. In in his case as a player. And he couldn't believe the difference in the players that had come to the club since he left to the ones that he, he played with in terms of like he didn't see the same commitment right, and, and yeah. drive that he had that and he his does, teammates. Yeah. And he said to Ronnie Whelan, you know, I'm saying, you know, get get stuck into him and stuff like this and he's me and said that doesn't matter, boss, uh, don't care as much. No, said, 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 why is that? I said, the money. And I think I think Howard found the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I think, you remember that game at Spurs? We got beaten 3-2, I think in 93-4. We were in 2-1 in injury time down there. And they scored twice. Yeah, scored yeah, yeah, yeah. And Howard asked the players to change things around, I think. And none of them listened to, you know, in the dressing room. And I think he thought, it's, it's gone here. It's gone. And he, he resigned two, two months later. Mm. You know, and, and I think over the on Dublin. No, it wasn't really that. You know, like that was the smell that was of the, the smoke story, screen. Yeah, it? yeah. That I don't the think story. there's no. I don't. I think that was. Uh, it was how maybe it, eighth that day we beat Southampton. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah. I, I, yeah, big, yeah. How, how it said that the board didn't back him over trying to buy Dion Dublin, yeah. but the problem is, is that there was no deal for Dion Dublin. You know, how it said mm. I've done a deal with Ferguson. You know, Ferguson mm. rejected it, and uh, I think it was just a bit of a smoke screen. I think Howard thought, sure, the writing on the wall for a number of things. I hate the board. It, you know, Jim Greenwood, who was the great, yeah. the, you know, he was and the secretary, yeah, became yeah. effectively the, the, the CEO, yeah. modern parlance. He was one of him, Philip Carson, Howard ran the club in the mid 80s. Mm. By 93, Greenwood and Carson are both gone. Yeah. 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 And so I think Howard saw the writing on the wall there. Mm. Um, in terms of getting back in, and that was the first thing he saw. Like he had very little money to spend, and what to be fair, what he spent, he didn't spend it very well. I think Colin Harvey said that he did the best for Howard getting going to get sacked anyway, because we we had begin. Though we, it was one of these things where we were tanking, but we weren't by the drop zone. It was a bit like when he got rid of Cumin. Yeah. It only take a couple of games yeah. wins to get you back up, but we were going downhill, yeah. and I think. Um, the other reason is the speculators is uh, Graham Taylor just being sacked as England manager, and I think he thought he that, he, yeah, yeah, mm. that the FA weren't going to poach somebody from a club. And I think if he thought, oh, if you're out, you out uh, yeah, yeah, which nearly happened. Mm. I, I, that story's in, in the book, yeah. uh, nearly happened. And I think so. It's, but there's another strange decision by Howard about the timing of it, right after the game, the pre- where he'd done the press conference, mm. walked out, and half an hour later, he walks in the old press room at Goodison. Up the stairs, and he comes back and said, "You know, they, he didn't come back. Uh, Marsh come back in. You know, saying how's gone. Wow, 
you know. Mm, that's driving cool. home. Yeah, Come yeah, on the radio, yeah. couldn't believe it. Yeah, in the days when I never managed to leave in the row was a bit of novelty <laughs> rather than like yeah. happens every yeah, six months. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and I think Howard, yeah, so I think there was a lot, he said sm- Dublin, but I think that was a smoke screen for like, like a lot of things in Howard between 87 and 93, what he said was not necessarily the truth. The, it was part of the truth. Yeah. I won't say it was a lie, it was part yeah, of yeah, the truth. Yeah, there was yeah, all the yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. And there's probably what? Well, 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 leaving Everton, why have you done that? Why have you gone to Bilbao? Mm. Why have you gone to City? Why have you come back to Everton? Why have you left Everton? There's there's five yeah, or yeah. six things in that yeah, time. Yeah. But, but Clough said that about him. So I can't, Brian Clough said that. I can't believe how he keeps on surprising us. Yeah. And if you think about it, his, his career was just stalled, didn't it? I think. Once it, yeah. yeah once it, was, it. it was disappointing in 87. And I don't want to stick the boots on Howard here because I think, it, but if you've got to give a balanced view, in that the disappointing thing for me in 87 was he'd said after he won the title that we've only laid the foundations here as a Goodison. So that's mm. like first week of May 87. So we need to kick on from this. Six weeks later, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. For the new challenge in Bilbao, but how isn't the real challenge here creating a dynasty creating like you've got an Anfield? Because mm. you've got the right it. opportunity here. Yeah. He's still only young, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Howard would be what forty-one. Mm. So young. So he'd be like what Moyes was when he came. Well, yeah, yeah. So by forty-one, yeah, Howard's yeah. won two titles and the yeah, best best, best man in England, yeah, one of the best yeah. in Europe, and. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not going to be negative about that, but I think it, it's a story worth telling. At the same time, in the book, it's weird, my dad, that the title win in 86, 87 was just, he just can't, he, he's just unbelievable bit of management. Mm. It's, you know, it, it's not like Ranieri winning it with Leicester, because mm. we were obviously a really good team, but in yeah. terms of having to manage the squad, mm. stuff like that, was, yeah, and, and yeah, lost bad. it to Liverpool, yeah, to, yeah. you know, the, the double the year, the year before, it was... It was fantastic bit yeah. of management, mm. but his career after that is just uh, it's a series of there's a there's a chapter in it called how it takes a wrong turn, and it's he takes several wrong turns. Yeah. He should never have come back in ninety, never have come back in ninety. Mm. No, I think that was uh, he got told not to come back, you know, by friends. Did they, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People in Manchester, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if they'd see what they'd see, he come back to a club completely different to what yeah. it was. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, I don't want to say like. It'd be more more he's coming back now mm. compared to when he went to two thousand thirty. I know it's ten years and now mm. it was three years. Same thing. More he's not coming back to the club that he was when he, he left. He left. Yeah. And I think that was the same with Howard. I think mm. the job in the nineties should have gone to Joe. Yeah, yeah. Because the old was, thought, thought that was Joe. Yeah. And Joe would have been a better appointment than ninety four. When ninety four, I think. Mm. Um in that uh, um he he, like like Moise and indeed Howard before him, ten years before, he'd be coming in from a lower division to Everton yeah. and laying the job on the on, yeah. on, uh, laying the in while he's you know just while he's yeah, in the Everton, yeah, yeah. laying the managerial role while he's in the Everton job. Yeah, I think when he came four years later, the club's got a lot more baggage. Mm. Joe's got a lot more baggage. He's been an Oldham, he's been relegated and stuff like that. Mm. He's a little bit more north, I think. And damaged, but I think in '90 it was it was the future of English management. I think it would have been mm. a great great move for him, and yeah. I think he would have he would have grown it, grown it to it yeah. in the same way as Moyes Moyes did. Mm. I think in '94 he's not going to grow into it, yeah. and I think you know that's for the, that's for the next that's book. For that, the next yeah, book. but yeah, so it, that, it's interesting. You know, yeah, it's just yeah. interesting that it, it's it's nine years, but absolutely. <laughs> The amount of stuff that goes on in nine years, yeah. and you know what you end up talking about, Baz? This familiar football finance, players' wages. TV deals, mm. growth of the big clubs, you know, all this type of stuff. Yeah. It's all started then, isn't it? Well, the well, 80s, early 90s. Started, yeah. So all, all the things, you know, the, the, the large portions of the book, you know, you'd be surprised, was, did they actually play football in that time? Because you end up talking about all this, because yeah. all the stuff we have in football now all starts in the late 80s, early 90s, didn't it? But, you know, but people think that uh, Premier League, when the Premier League starts, loads of, you know, loads of money, their TV deal, 35 million quid. That was the first one off Sky. Awesome. Evan got one and a half million quid. Oh. But what, what, what is it now? It's, it was it 2.4 billion mm. a year, isn't it? Off overseas mm. or something like that. Uh, 35 million quid. It's it's all crazy. the bulk of the money was was through, still through the gate. Yeah, yeah. And we, we started to, I, I, the wrap up chapter at the end talks about this, right, relating it to now. In uh, we, we'd started to fall way behind other clubs. We haven't, you know, people say we're a big five, we're not really, mm. um, because 
we were in, we called the Big Five in the 80s one of the clubs in the Big Five because we were successful. We had big gates. Mm. But what we lacked was Liverpool and Man United's national and international support, mm. huge support. Yeah. And Arsenal and Spurs, because they're in London. London, yeah. Access to commerce, richer fan base, that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah. We had neither. Yeah. And when, f- when the money started to come into football, late 80s, early 90s, and crowds are going up, we're vulnerable. We haven't gotten the yeah, advantages. Yeah. And that, that, you know, and once that gap starts, mm. you're never getting it back. And yeah. that explains some way where we are. Where we are now. Uh, what happened in, in the game in the, the late 80s, early 90s. We should have done more, but we were just basically, as I said, you know, and we've always been like that. We are historically successful provincial club, but we don't have specific advantages of other clubs, mm. you know, and in a globalised game. And we've never helped ourselves. Never helped ourselves. Oh, we should have done more. Yeah. Because our peers at that time were like clubs like Aston Villa, mm. uh, Leeds. Mm. So, uh, Aston Villa in the 90s, still successful. Mm. Mm. Still winning cups, mm. all that type. Oh, yeah, there was loads of stuff in the board, and we didn't we didn't do right. Mm. Right, absolutely. Uh, we'd be appointed to GP as a chairman when everybody else has got business business leaders, as you know, David Dean at Arsenal and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You've got a GP as chairman. If you're on his opening interview, goes, um, I uh, I like to get as many, uh, he was a great golfer, David Marsh. Uh, I, uh, I like to go to as many games as away games as possible when it coincides with golfing dinners. <laughs> So, does that does that sound like I mean, a man? Does yeah. that somebody who's got committed. somebody invested yeah. as, as yeah. club chairman? You know, so yeah. it's handy for me. Goodison's right by my GP sur- surgery, and you've got David Dean going into the you know, you know the London finance houses and mm. getting it's twenty crazy. million quid and stuff like this. I know because the Arsenal could do that, we couldn't. Neither could Liverpool, to be fair. Mm. But that just shows you the that there's a difference. I think we've been we, going on for a yeah. Years, did, Carter was the one of the founders of the Premier League. I might have think he thought saw the writing on the wall a little bit maybe. Mm. Um he thought, you know, we should have got somebody in there who was a visionary. Mm. Okay, we may not have been Arsenal, Spurs, Liverpool, Man United, but mm. we would have been a hell of a lot higher than what we what we turned out to be. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, that's for a, that's for another that's for another, another book. That's but, for your next one. Yeah, yeah. But mm. that, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot it, it explain at that the end chapter about why what goes on this page explains why where we are now to a degree yeah but it also does say that you know i, I do i do talk about what i think that bugs me most about it and i think i said before before i came on is you know like the, the appointment to harvey and stuff he's an evertonian great he's yeah. appointed all evertonian players as coaches <laughs> they we love having play. they 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 should be the people who fill jobs at everton mm. but actually and the club loves that doesn't it mm. but actually that's not necessarily the best that'll be the choice. best person for you it. can't you can't be that insular and say Evertonians are the best. Mm. You have to be. Yeah, you, you have to challenge. Don't you bring people from outside challenge? Mm. And I saw about that a bit. And then that culture was around there at the time. Like when we appointed Bingham in '73, he was a former. He was, he, he was appointed as a seven job just purely because he was a former player. Not mm. that he was any great shakes as a manager. Yeah. So that's you know there's a bit, that's lots of bits at the end. Theme that's run through. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Howard was a former player, but Howard was a hugely promising coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Catter was a former player, but he he was a great, great manager before he came to Everton. And and, and, and I'm the only about... people to ever win trophies, ex Everton players. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But so that doesn't help. That doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, they ought to do with Harry Catter, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and, but I talk about, I talk, I can't remember. I, I say it's a little bit narcissistic. Mm. We just love it. Everton. It's got to be Everton, you know. Yeah. It's got to be, they didn't people understand, they, mm. you know. But actually, it's not the case. You've got to be. You've got to look outside. Well, that you know. And, and well, it, that's where we're. At, I guess, like, just to finish, that's where we are now, aren't we? We're on the verge of a takeover, and these people are coming in who are from the yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. And this is what we. This is what we want, change, you know. Yeah. And 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 the sorta that was sort of like a ninety one. You know, mm. I'm talking about the David yeah. Marsh thing. Is, yeah, yeah. Is rather rather than look outside. I mean, always we always to look out for the investment, but like mm. at least widen your horizons, mm. even in the boardroom by the people you appoint. You we go to a local GP who lives, who's, 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 who's yeah, imagine, he's just yeah. out the car. Yeah. Good, yeah. Lovely bloke that he was, I believe. Yeah. Mm. But actually, you're not going to kick on in the in, 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Getting three, uh, three patients in an hour. Yeah, abs- really. absolutely. Yeah. Probably just be in the game, actually, to be yeah. fair, if you'd seen us near United. Yeah, and, yeah. and I talk about that quite a bit mm. that, 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 that thing about. Evertonians are great, so we'll just always appoint them yeah. and stuff like that, you know. And I think that's damaged us. Yeah. 
over the year. I think there's a time and a place for it, mm. but I think that that is our first port of call. I think that dam has damaged us on on, on occasions, and it's all all in there. All it. Like, well, let's get it then. Run. You can get it get it on uh, all the usual outlets. Yeah. You know, uh, I've had plenty of good feedback from people who've well, they've not read it, but you know, in terms of want to read it. Yeah. And yeah. it's the third and final one of uh, the Moise. Is it available Moise, now? Moise, the Moise? Moise. It was out on Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, yeah, okay. that's a Freudian slip, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, as uh, Chris Beasley from the Echo, it's the the Holy Trinity of Everton books. So I'll have all of that. And, and the end, of course, is that's from the NEC. You were our sponsors. Yeah. Uh, the fonts. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, the and that's uh, yeah. Also contemporary, yeah, and it's uh, sixty. Was it one hundred and sixty thousand words? So across the okay. three books, it's half a million words, Baz. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of words, that isn't it? It's a uh, lot. And if you go on, um, you go, if you look it up on the internet on Mount Fain Publishing, who had the publishers in Liverpool, you get all three books for fifty quid. Okay, good. Which is Lovely Christmas presents. Thirty-four years of Everton history, mm. half a million, uh, a million words, words on it, and explains I think hell of a lot about why we are where we are now you know as well and that will become even more apparent you know if well hopefully when i do do the next one you need you to uh, get them then you can go down the pub and, and recount some of these stories yeah yeah absolutely look get that yeah. half a million words of knowledge into yeah. your brain uh brilliant it's available now it's called the end good day to Ethan peter reed on the front so make sure be a lovely christmas present for Evertonians in your family. So uh, big thanks to Gavin for coming Pleasure. and chatting to us. Cheers, mate. Thanks Cheers, very much. Mate. Make sure you get your copy, like, subscribe, do all that. See you later.